When should you use a ring flash and when should you absolutely not use one? I'm gonna tell you on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and click that little button down below. Also use the bell so you get notifications as soon as new videos come out all week long. Also, coming up, I am hosting my own online music and action photography workshop on October 16th. If you're watching this in 2020, that's just a few weeks away, I'm gonna teach you how to shoot sports, concerts, your kids, really anything that moves fast. We're gonna go through the basics of exposure and focus modes and composition. We'll do some workflows. You can see how to manage lots and lots of images and also talk about advanced things like remote cameras. You can get all the information about it at shootfromthepit.com. You'll be able to watch for 30 days afterward if you can't join me live, but hopefully you'll be here on October 16th, shootfromthepit.com. All right, let's get to today's show. The question is from Larry M and he wants to know, what is your take on ring lights for photography? Well, Larry's probably asking about still photography, but ring lights are also popular now for video, especially now with people working at home and they're having webcam meetings. Ring lights are a good way to go with that as well. I'm gonna talk about both video and stills today, but first, what is a ring light? Well. Here is a ring light. Why is it called a ring light? Well, it looks like a ring, right? It's a big circle. Um, the way this works usually, traditionally the way you use a ring light is you take your camera and you're gonna put it, first of all, you have to usually take off the lens hood. And what you're gonna do, this is the flashpoint version and it's got a nice mounting uh, plate here and you just stick your camera right on there and then you put the lens right through the middle and that's how you're gonna shoot. This whole thing actually could be mounted on a tripod. You could hand hold it, it's a little front heavy but it absolutely could be handheld as well. Um, now, why would you use a light that looks like a circle like that? Well, like I said, the primary way it's been used is on axis, which means you shoot through the lens like that, and the light is gonna come straight forward right from the lens position. Now, that's gonna give you flat, shadowless light. Uh, it's really good on skin, because the light is coming from all sides around the lens, on skin, shadows are gonna show imperfections, right? Things like wrinkles. So by having shadowless light and light really where there are no shadows, you're gonna avoid a lot of that. Now in, in still photography, this look, this ring light on axis look, uh, with using the ring light as uh, your key light, your main light. It was just a really popular look, maybe back in the 80s, like a lot of high fashion, where they had really energetic models and, and lots of action and energy. And uh, it was kind of a look that was very popular at the time. Now to show you how this works, instead of bringing somebody here in my studio, trying to work uh, solo as much as possible, I'm gonna use my virtual studio software. It's called Set a Light 3D. You've heard me mention it before. I bought the program on my own. I loved it. I reached out to the company and they offered my viewers a uh, discount code, a 15% off discount code. I'm gonna put that link below. So if you wanna get this software for yourself, I highly recommend it. Go ahead and use that code, it'll give you a nice discount. Now let's go in the software here. Basically what you do is you can put as many models as you want. They have different uh, people you can put in there, male, female, and then different clothes and every possible light modifier you can imagine. Now what I've done, you can see here on the side, I've got my layout, I've got my flash, my ring light right on my camera and the model right in front of the backdrop. And you can see what that shadow is doing. The shadow is because it's going, coming straight from the lens, it's hitting right behind the model. Now that look, that, that ring light look, when you look through the lens, is gonna give you this halo-like shadow on the background. Now, as far as on my subject, there's basically no shadow. It's a direct, straight, on-axis light. And that's, like I said, really nice. And that sort of style was always, they like to overexpose it, which is what I've done here. By the way, of course, your, your exposure setting is here. That's just the light. Um, I've got all my different camera settings up here. I've already preset all of this for this, uh, this demo. And uh, again, the light on her is shadowless and flat and even, and that's a look. But again, you can tell the ring light look when you've got somebody up against the background and you can see that halo around them on the back. And uh, that was the fashion for a while. Now, another way you can tell if somebody's using a ring light is if you look at the catch light in their eyes. In somebody's, our eyes are very reflective and in their eyes, in your eyes in a photograph, you can see usually the light modifiers that the photographer has used. It's a good way to reverse engineer pictures and try to figure out how it was lit. But when you use a ring flash or ring light, it's gonna be that 
sort of really unique donut shape, right? And you can see it pretty obviously. Now, I've done shoots with this before. You can Obviously, it's gonna reflect in glasses, but I also did a video about this, a two minute tip video that I'll put a link below, but basically the closer you are, the closer the lens is, and the closer the light is to your subject, the bigger that uh, catch light is gonna be. If you're further back, it might be a little bit harder to see, but you can always see that distinctive donut shape in somebody's eyes. Now, you could take the ring flash and put it off camera. You could put it in a, on a stand and then put an umbrella on it or a softbox or something like that. I'd say if you're only gonna use it like that, there's really, there are better solutions. Um, it's a little, like I said, awkward to do that. If it's the only light you own, it certainly can be put into double duty if you're gonna use it on axis as well. But if you're only gonna use it off, off uh, axis, I'd say there are more traditional flash options that you can use. But the thing about this type of light is now that that look really isn't as fashionable, you certainly can still play with it every once in a while. But now that that look isn't as popular as it was, there still is a great use for a ring flash, and that is for on-axis fill. Not as a key light, but as a fill light. So let's come back into the software here. I'm gonna change my lens from an 85 to a 200. Let's aim my camera back up so we're really seeing her face well. And again, you can see that halo. It just takes a second for these to render because I have it on really high quality. I wanna see every last detail. So let's turn our ring flash off and just bring in a soft box, right? Now this is a traditional large soft box. I've got it up high, about 45 degrees over, 45 degrees up. You can see where I've got it set. And then um, what I'm gonna do if you look at the picture, you can see the shadows here because um, I could even bring in a, a black um, a V flat on the side to really kill those, those shadows, right? But right now, those shadows, even without that, we're in a large room here, those shadows are really, really dark. And that's a look, and you might want it like that, that's okay. Back in the old days when we were shooting for print publication, uh, pre-press uh, departments would have a really hard time with that at a magazine because that's a lot of ink to put in there and they really would have, they didn't like that when it was pitch black, dark with no detail at all. So today obviously that's not as much of an issue but it's really high contrast and it may or may not be the look that you want. So to get some fill in there, you can do it a couple ways. Sometimes we might put another soft box on the other side that light's gonna be really directional and you're still gonna have shadows, they're just gonna be sort of in the middle. So what I can do is then add my ring flash back in. Now obviously the power is way too high, but if we bring it down so it's just a fill, it's less powerful than our key light, you can see the difference here. Now look at those shadows. The shadows here are filled in really nicely. So it's still there. You still wanna have shadows a lot of times too, because it adds depth and it gives it a dimensionality, a three dimensionality that you don't have with that flat shadowless light. But let's turn off the fill and you can see how dark it is in here under her hair and next to on the side of her face. And then if we add it back in, it just fills that in. And you can, you know, do this to taste. So you could bring it up maybe a little bit to fill it in even a little more. So you've still got shadows, but they're just filled in a little bit more. And it's a really nice control thing. It's because the light is on axis, it's coming from straight in. Any place that there's shadow, it's gonna be filled in evenly. So it's really a nice way to control your shadows by using that on axis fill with the ring light. Now, I mentioned video before. Uh, like I said, these are very popular. They sell very inexpensive ones. I'll put links down to uh, inexpensive ones that can be used for video. They're usually a little bit bigger than this because you don't have to just get your one lens through there. You can put your phone in the middle or however you need to do for your webcam. Um, Obviously a flash is gonna be much more powerful, but if you have one like this, you can even turn on as a modeling light. You could go ahead and turn on. So um, you could use this as a, as a video light if you need it, right? Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And it, when you shoot on axis, again, it's nice and flattering. However, there is one case where you never ever wanna use this as your main on axis key light. And that is, especially for a webcam, if you're on with your boss or whatever, if you wear glasses, right? Take a look at this. If I go right here, you can see these bright circles in my eyes that are gonna be very distracting for anybody use, that uses them. Now they're green here because of the coating that's on my glasses, but uh, that's gonna happen with most people's glasses, or at least a lot of them. So, uh, you know, they've been selling these ring lights and they're great for webcams, but if you wear glasses, you have gotta get that light off camera. I did a video uh, recently about wearing glasses and how to keep reflections out. I've got a large softbox here off to the side in my Clar light, 
And um, sometimes when I turn all the way, you can see it in my glasses. But when I'm looking this way, it's far enough at an angle that you don't see it at all. So um, that's how you use a ring light. It's a great on-axis fill. If you want to do that old 80s fashion look, you can do that as well. So thanks again. I hope that answers your question. Remember, if you like this software, it's really cool because you can uh, sort of pre-plan photo shoots and then, and then you know, print out PDFs of your setup and all the different modifiers, or you can just create in the software itself just for the sake of creating things infinitely customizable. There's a whole community section where people have posted the things they've done. And it's really amazing some of the complex uh, things that lighting ways people have uh, designed these things to do crazy, crazy cool pictures. So check that out. The coupon code below 15% off. Um, thank you to the company for providing that. Also, don't forget a little more promo, my workshop, October 16th, go to shootfromthepit.com. Hope you can join me for that. You can go to AskDavidBergman.com to submit questions for this show. And then, of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. That was a lot of links. Hope you caught them all. Remember, I'm back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern with a brand new episode. I'll see you back here next week on Ask David Bergman.